Hello all, uh, Vinod here from Entrance Engineering Academy. Before going into the video, I just want to uh, say a few things about uh, Entrance Engineering Academy. So EEA is an online gate preparation portal and we offer full course for gate ME and XE. In addition to that, uh, subject courses are also available for ME, XE, CE and PI. Engineering Mathematics course is available for all stream and in addition to that, we offer online test series for gate ME and XE also. So this is our website you can just check out so that you will get to know more about us and in addition we have our own android app and also ios app and you can just go through that also to know more about our courses okay and this is our last year that is gate 2021 result from xe and now let us proceed to the video and this video is taken from uh, online video course of endurance engineering academy so let us proceed for our next topic freely falling bodies so first uh, we will understand what is this uh, what we are going to deal in this particular topic uh, then we will discuss some problems uh, then we will enter into uh, 2d motions okay right so what actually this uh, particular topic is going to deal with very simple i'm just taking a body here if i leave it I, I just imagine i'm just removing my hand okay i'm not holding it okay so if i just leave it okay so if i just leave it what are all the different effects this body is going to subject it to see i'm just holding it i'm leaving it okay so what are all the different effects was there any external effect which is acting on the body if you observe properly the one and only effect which is going to act on this body okay i'm just holding it i'm leaving it either i'm holding it and i'm leaving it or i'm holding it and i'm throwing it okay i'm throwing it with some initial velocity okay i'm throwing with some initial velocity it is moving up and anyways it will reach some distance and again it will come back okay so holding uh, i'm leaving it or i'm i'm holding it here and i'm throwing it whatever may be the condition this body will be subjected to only one effect which is nothing but the gravitational effect right nothing else there will be air resistance there will be that is what the drag will be there but uh, mechanics is a subject where we are not going to deal much about air resistance and drag that is a separate subject fluid mechanics where we will talk about air resistance uh, along with this gravitational field okay so we will consider gravitational field and also air resistance and that is the nothing but uh, drag forces right so those things we will discuss separately in boundary layer chapter in uh, fluid mechanics this is not the subject where we are going to introduce that here we are neglecting the air resistance okay so just if body is there and if it is falling down what is the effect on this body the only effect will be gravitational effect so if i use newton's law um, as of now i didn't talk about newton's law we will talk about it later when I, when i enter into uh, free body diagram and equilibrium so generally if this thing is something which you already know from very basics okay it's very basics we know that force is equal to mass into acceleration right so the only component of force which is going to act here or only effect which is going to be is gravitational effect so acceleration okay will be g okay very straightforward so the only force which is going to act here was the gravitational force which is equal to mass into uh, acceleration due to gravity g okay so only effect was gravitational effect and the one that is only force was the gravitational force and uh, the acceleration okay the acceleration of this particular body will be acceleration due to gravity only acceleration due to gravity there is no other external acceleration and we already know that acceleration due to gravity is constant see listen one thing acceleration gravity will also vary okay uh, depends on the depends on the what is that depends on the height okay it depends on the plane on where we are standing it will vary but most of the cases in engineering to make the things very simple as i already discussed about idealization and assumptions right so to make the things very simple we are going to assume that oscillation due to gravity is constant in most of the subjects okay in most of the subjects in almost all the subjects okay and that g value sometimes it will be 9.81 sometimes it will be 10 or sometimes it will be 9.8 but make sure that if they are giving any anything in the question suppose g is given as 10 meter per second square in question you need to use that 10 meter per second square only when you are solving if nothing is given then assume it to be 9.81 no issues at all but if it is given in the question assume that value only okay 
so now we can start so what are the two cases the first case is i'm holding it here and i'm dropping it the other case was i'm throwing it okay i'm throwing it with some initial velocity the first case i'm holding and i'm dropping right that case is nothing but a descent okay and i'm holding and i'm dropping and when i'm holding and when i'm dropping initially there is no velocity okay i'm not i'm not implementing i'm not uh, i'm not throwing okay i'm not throwing it i'm holding it and i'm dropping it so obviously the uh, initially there is no velocity and the another case which i was talking about i'm holding it and i'm throwing up right and i'm throwing up now when i'm throwing there will be some initial velocity so that initial velocity will be u okay so it is thrown up with initial velocity u okay so this case where the object moves upward is called as ascent and this case where the object falls down okay with a zero initial velocity is called as descent if you observe this these two are same cases only but i'm discussing in a two different cases uh, just to make sure that you won't do any mistakes in the problem and it is better you do it in a separate case then uh, combine it what does it mean these two are same cases only very simple hold hold something hold some object i will use this okay hold some object throw it okay hold some object throw it with some initial velocity it will reach some maximum height okay as you could see it, it is reaching maximum height right it is reaching some maximum height and again it is coming back and again it is hitting uh, hitting uh, hitting my hand so these two are same cases only so it will reach maximum height when i'm throwing it will go to some maximum height it will reach some maximum height and again it will come back and again it will come and hit so first is ascent happening next it is in happening so combinedly these these are same cases only but we are going to discuss as a two different case so that will be easy for us to solve the problem okay right so the first case is ascent when the ball is projected with some initial velocity u what are all the other effects this ball is subjected to or this object is subjected to only gravitational effect and how the gravitational effect is going to act whatever may be the condition okay whatever may be the condition gravitation will always acts towards the center only that is towards the center of earth okay towards the center of earth means in in general in general case it's always acting downwards okay if i consider this is my ground gravitational effect will be always acting downwards only in general gravitational effect will always try to uh, act towards the center of earth since it is acting towards the center of earth uh, in general if i consider this is the ground means the gravitational effect is going to act down only so always the gravitational effect will be acting down so g okay if i consider the case of descent there is no initial velocity there will be only one thing which is going to be acceleration due to gravity and that acceleration will always act downwards as we know already okay i hope it is clear as of now ha huh. now coming to this case what this acceleration due to gravity is doing it is opposing the initial velocity it's very obvious right when i am applying some for when i am applying some velocity this acceleration due to gravity will try to pull or sorry it will try to um, make this body to come down only but since it is having some initial velocity it will move up it will move up it will move up it will move up but this acceleration due to gravity is acting down so it will be keep on pulling it down so it will reach some maximum distance and then this velocity will become zero so what's going to happen the body is going to move up move up move up move up but this acceleration due to gravity is going to pull it down this initial velocity will be keep on decreasing it will reach some value where initial velocity will become zero that is the overall principle okay so g and u acts in opposite direction okay g and u acts in opposite direction so what we can uh, say since u and g are acting in opposite direction both of them will have uh, different signs so let us assume acceleration uh, velocity to be positive so since g is opposing the velocity so g will be minus g in this case okay or in simply a will be minus g okay acceleration is going to be minus g in general a is g magnitude is constant but its uh, direction is also in fact constant but based on the situation sometimes it will be minus sometimes it will be plus since uh, since here uh, acceleration due to gravity is opposing our motion so we are taking a is equal to minus g so what happens it will be keep on rising it will go to some maximum distance right let us assume here h is zero okay this is our reference so i am assuming h is zero the body is moving up it is reaching some distance h 
h okay here h is equal to h some distance h and further it can move up okay further it can move up it can reach maximum distance and how to find out that h max we will talk about in the next video okay we will talk about that in the next video it can move up move up move up move up and finally it can reach zero velocity regarding this what is the maximum uh, distance it can reach those things i will talk about it later as of now i will discuss about general equation okay that is i am throwing the body up it is reaching some arbitrary distance h okay so uh, what how to find out those things that's what we are going to discuss we know in general see very important point we assumed acceleration due to gravity to be constant so acceleration is constant so if acceleration is constant we have three beautiful equations and i can use those three beautiful equations okay what is that v is equal to u plus at and um, s is equal to ut plus 1 by 2 at square and um, uh, v square is equal to u square plus 2as and for this particular case acceleration due to gravity is minus g because it is opposing the motion so what will happen to my final velocity uh, final equations u v is equal to that is v is nothing but velocity at some particular height okay velocity at some particular height h velocity at some particular height h from the ground from the reference that will be equal to u plus but a is minus g right a is minus g a is equal to minus g so it becomes minus g into t okay so t is the time taken for reaching this object from ground to that point and similarly s is equal to ut a is minus g so minus 1 by 2 gt square and v square is equal to u square again this is minus so minus 2 2 g s will become h i am sorry this is h okay this is h right so h is the distance this body has moved okay uh, yeah so these are the three equations for ascend case when it is moving up okay now when it is moving down okay initial velocity is zero because i'm not throwing it i'm just dropping it okay initial velocity is zero but in this case acceleration is supporting the motion Okay, both acceleration and the motion is going to be in the same direction. Since both are in the same direction, here acceleration due to gravity will be positive. That's it. Very simple. Now what I'm going to do was, this ball will be keep on traveling, traveling, traveling. Since acceleration is supporting the motion, very listen carefully, since acceleration is supporting the motion, this velocity will increase. So it will be keep on moving, moving, moving and it will hit. It will hit the ground with some velocity. How to find out that we will see later. Now I'm going to give you the general statement, general equations. Let us assume I'm dropping it. It is moving. It is reaching some distance. Okay. It is reaching some distance h. Okay. Now when I'm dealing with the descent, I need to consider it from the top. Okay. So here h is equal to zero. It has moved some distance h. Now again here also acceleration due to gravity will be g. And let us assume it is moving with some velocity v okay at acceleration uh, at a distance h its velocity let us assume it to be v when it keep on moving down when it is hitting there will be some velocity how to find out that we will see later okay now we know that a is equal to g right so what will happen in case of uh, uh, descent wherever a is there just substitute g okay wherever v is there you can keep it as v only and wherever s is there you have to substitute h so v will be equal to u plus gt okay h is equal to ut plus 1 by 2 gt square and v square is equal to u square plus 2 times of gt h that's it okay so this is for ascend and this is for descent okay so what is this v indicates velocity um, for the distance h okay so if if the ball if the object has traveled a distance h what is the velocity and similarly t is the time taken for this object to travel okay g is the acceleration due to gravity nothing question was already displayed in the board actually this question has been kept here just to explain some concepts and to derive some formulas and uh, these concepts and formulas will be directly useful when we are starting projectile motion 
as of now we are dealing with uh, one dimensional motion only that is say for example freely falling object if i throw up it's going to travel in a straight line only and when it is coming down it's going to travel in a straight line only so those are rectilinear motions right but in case of projectile that is when when, when it travels in this direction it's going to be two dimensional so and we will talk about two dimensional motion later in detail okay and these derivation will be straight forward it will be applicable in two dimensional so uh, just listen to this properly okay now uh, they given that uh, they given some initial they given some initial velocity and they said that some object is thrown up okay with some initial velocity i'm not going to take the numbers and substitute here let me deal with the uh, let me deal with the variables finally i will substitute the number and i will give you the answer okay so this is what happening there is a ball okay or some some object i'm throwing that ball or some object at initial velocity u okay it is keep on moving 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 it is reaching some distance and let us consider that it is half a distance okay so what will happen to velocity as acceleration was opposing it okay as acceleration was opposing it velocity will keep on decreasing as it is moving up velocity will keep on decreasing and it will reach some maximum distance it's very obvious you can just consider that i'm throwing it what is happening it is reaching some point and and then it is coming back right so there will be some maximum height it can reach once it reaches that maximum height it will come back it will come back and hit the ground again okay so that maximum height which is going to reach that is something which we need to find that is the first question the second question is what is the time taken to reach that maximum height okay if i throw a ball what is the time taken to reach this maximum height okay so that is the second question and third question is velocity with which the ball is going to hit the ground okay very very simple i'm throwing it it's reaching here and then, and then after reaching the maximum distance it will come and again it will hit back the ground right what is the velocity with which it is going to hit back the ground i will draw that later just wait for a moment there is a third question and uh, sorry there is a fourth question third question is time taken to reach the ground back okay again after reaching here it will take some time to reach the ground back right so what is the time taken for the ball to reach the ground back hmm fifth question is velocity at the half of the maximum height so which means this is the total max and at h max by 2 what is going to be the velocity that is what okay these are the different five questions they are asking we'll start from the first one first question is they are asking h max right that is if i throw a ball what is the total what is the maximum distance the ball can reach and how can i find i can use these three equations and the important point is in case of ascent acceleration will be minus g okay that is it's going to oppose the motion okay so out of this three which equation i can use um very simple we know acceleration we know initial velocity we know final velocity that it will reach zero obvious right once it reaches maximum distance it will be zero again it will come back so we can use uh, a time independent equation because we don't know time so time independent equation is this right the third one okay so for ascent case so first let me write down ascent for ascent case uh, since acceleration due to gravity is minus g my formula what will happen to my formula s i already did it in the last video h is equal to ut minus sorry i should not use this equation i'm very sorry this equation v square is equal to u square minus 2g h am i right 2g h now i need to find out h max right so wherever h is there substitute h max so which is going to be u square minus 2g h max and when h is h max what will happen to velocity that is final velocity it will be zero okay so final velocity will be zero now rearrange it bring this u square this side minus minus will get cancelled 2g this side h max is going to be u square by 2g okay where this u is nothing but initial velocity and uh, 2g we know that acceleration due to gravity 2 into acceleration due to gravity this is our hmm, first question answer now coming to second question that is time taken to reach this maximum distance how to determine again i need to use any one of these three equation now i know what is h max right i know what is h max first let me write down the equation general equation h is equal to u into t minus 1 by 2 gt square okay since it is opposing it has to be minus now h max is known right h max is known so for reaching h max distance the time taken was let me take it as t max okay minus 1 by 2 into g t max square now we will rearrange it so that i can get uh, t max and i hope that it will become difficult for us to find out h max from this equation 
instead what we can do I'm very sorry this is to uh, 280 right I'm very sorry we can use oh, this can equation use the first equation V is equal to u plus a t which is nothing but u minus g t right 2 g t okay u plus 280 which is nothing but u minus 2 g t because it is moving down we know that when it reaches maximum height okay when it reaches maximum height final velocity will be 0 initial velocity will be u 2 into g into t will be t max okay so t max will be equal to u by 2g so this is maximum height the ball can reach this is also called as time of ascent okay you can just note it out time of ascent why it is called as time of ascent the time taken during this ascent to reach the maximum height right so we got two answers so h max is u square by 2g t max is u by 2g now time taken to reach the ground back now this is very important listen now it is descending right so it reaches the maximum distance and now it starts to move down now what will be the velocity at which it will start moving down that is for descent case for descent case this ball okay i'm, I'm drawing the same ball only but i'm just representing here what will be the initial velocity for descent see initial velocity for ascent there will be some initial velocity because i'm throwing with some velocity but initial velocity of descent will be what so obviously going to be zero why because it reaches here velocity becomes zero now from here again it's going to move down and its velocity is going to be u okay so it's going to move down move down move down let us take this is the halfway okay halfway mark and again it is moving 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 it will reach the final state and it will hit the ground okay it will hit the ground with some velocity v okay so it is hitting the ground with some velocity v how to find it we will see okay now first the question is time taken to reach the ground back okay so now it is starting with a velocity zero and it is going to come and hit the ground and what about acceleration in this case acceleration due to gravity is going to support the velocity okay so acceleration due to gravity is going to support the velocity so velocity will be keep on increasing and it will hit the ground with some velocity so now for descent case what formula i can use we know initial velocity acceleration due to gravity is known we need to find t max right so out of uh, three options available which option i can use what is the another data which i have another data which i have very simple i know the distance between these two points right very obvious if a ball is thrown it will reach some distance whatever the distance it reach the same distance only it is going to cover back also so if this is h max okay if this is h max then this also h max only very straightforward very obvious right so i know h max also okay so now i know h max and i know initial velocity is zero and i know final velocity will take it as v and what else so which formula I can use? I can use uh, any any one of this, either this, this or this. So first I will use this equation, that is the third equation. And from this third equation, I will find out V square, okay? So third equation when it is moving down, so V square is equal to U square plus 2GH, am I right? And for the total distance, okay? If I want to find out the velocity at which it is hitting, H will be H max, okay? H will be H max. And uh, what about initial velocity? see final velocity of this ball will be initial velocity of when it is moving down so final velocity is zero so initial velocity when it is moving down will be zero so initial velocity in this case it is zero and final velocity will take it as v only 2g into and what about h max h max is u square by 2g right u square by 2g so it will get cancelled so v will be equal to i'm taking square root on both sides v will be equal to u what does it mean what does it mean whatever the velocity with which i am projecting up very important point whatever the velocity with which i am i am projecting this body up with a velocity u with the same velocity u it will reach back it will hit the ground okay so whatever velocity with which i am projecting up with the same velocity this ball will hit the ground so this v will be equal to u now time taken to reach the ground back how to find out simple i will use this equation okay i will use this equation the first equation hmm, let me try to complete it here okay so v is equal to 
u plus 2 at so u plus 2 gt okay why 2 gt because plus okay positive it is moving down it is positive and t what will happen to t if i take v that is if i take the final velocity then t will be t max right and we know initial velocity is already zero initial velocity means initial velocity of the descent initial velocity of the descent is already zero we'll take it as u dash okay so that there is no confusion hmm so u dash is zero okay u dash is zero okay so initial velocity of the descent is zero we know that final velocity of the descent will be equal to initial velocity of the ascent right final velocity of the descent will be equal to initial velocity of the ascent so in place of v i will take u which is equal to 2g into t max t max this is uh, let me take it as t max 2 this is t max 1 okay so t max 2 will be equal to u by 2g now what is the point you can note t max 1 is nothing but time taken for the ball uh, to reach the maximum height okay which is nothing but time of ascent now time taken for the ball to reach the ground back is also u plus 2g only so both the time of ascent and this is time of descent both are same okay time of ascent and time of descent both are same so here finally i will give you the concluding remarks as of now let me proceed and finally i will give you the concluding remarks so i'm sorry i did one biggest mistake here i'm very very sorry this is u plus at only i'm very sorry i did biggest mistake when i'm solving this it is just u plus at so when i'm using this formula it is going to be u minus gt only so u minus gt only so u minus gt so the final formula of t max 1 that is time of ascent will be u by g and similarly i used the formula again here right so when i am finding out t max 2 it is simply u by g okay i am very sorry about it okay so i need to remove the 2 okay i am very sorry i did a big mistake here there is i in the initial form i written 2 here but actual case is 2 is not there so this is going to be u by g only this is going to be u by g only uh this is anyways fine not an issue i i used the formula correctly and for solving this also i used the formula correctly only for solving time of ascent and time of descent i used the formula wrongly so now we are left out with the final equation right velocity at half of the maximum height so how to determine that so first let me talk about ascent okay let me talk about ascent in case of ascent initial velocity is u and let us consider at the half distance that is at uh, h max by 2 at half distance let the velocity be v dash okay when i am throwing up okay so what formula i can use i can use any of this formula let me use the third one because it will become very simple and uh, we can solve it easily okay to as and in case of ascent uh, gravity is going to oppose us so v square will be equal to u square minus 2g and it's going to be h right now since it is half the distance h will be h max by 2 okay so h is going to be h max by 2 and v is going to be v dash so v dash square will be equal to initial velocity u only minus 2 times of g and what is h max h max we determined as u square by 2g right so u square by 2g by 2 which becomes u square by 4g gg gets cancelled this becomes 2 and u square minus u square by 2 which is going to be again u square by 2 only v dash square so finally v dash will be square root of u square by 2 so which is u by root 2 okay so it is v dash which is nothing but velocity at half the mark when it is ascending okay so u by root 2 okay what about descending case descending case in case of descending again i will use the same formula v square is equal to u square plus 2g h in this case plus 2g h because uh, it is moving down so acceleration was in the direction and uh, half of the distance right half the distance means h max by 2 again okay h max by 2 again half of the distance and let us consider the velocity with which it is moving down is v double dash okay just for example so half of the distance is h max by 2 again i need to substitute h max by 2 here okay this will be h max by 2 okay 
So this will be V double dash square, which is equal to what about initial velocity? Here initial velocity was zero, right? So this will be u dash. So initial velocity is zero plus two times of g into h is h is h max by two. Let me substitute the h max value. H max is u square by two g. So u square by four g. Am I right? So this will get cancelled. It becomes two. Now taking square root on both sides. V double dash will be u by root two. So v dash is also u by root two. V double dash is also u by root two, which means, which means, at half way the half, at half mark, whatever the velocity this is having, the same velocity only this will also have. It is not only at the half way mark. At each and every point you take. Okay, if I take, if I take a velocity of the ball at this point. Uh, whatever the velocity with which it is moving up the same velocity only it will be moving down here and similarly if i take a ball here whatever the velocity with which it is moving up same velocity only it will be moving down that is the same thing which is happening here also right whatever the velocity with which it is moving up same velocity only it is hitting the ground back you can take an example of uh, a cricket ball okay so if the person who is hitting the ball okay that is a uh, the batsman who is hitting the ball if he hits with a very high velocity with the same velocity only the ball will land okay if suppose if you would have observed this the person who is catching the ball what he will do he will catch it and then he will be moving back why he is doing because the velocity with which the ball is going to hit will be very high because the velocity with which the person has hit it is very high so with the same velocity the ball will come so he will catch the ball and he will move a little because just to avoid the less just to make the impact less okay that is why because with the high velocity if it's impacted it will damage his hand so he is just moving back so that it will reduce the velocity okay so the conclusion here is whatever the velocity the velocity at some particular point when it is moving when it is moving up during ascent the same velocity will be happening at the other point when it is moving down so here v dash is going to be v dash and v double dash both are same so which is going to be u by root 2 now finally let me give you the conclusion of this particular problem or a particular concept which is very important for projectile motion also so when i'm throwing a ball upward it will move happily and it will reach some distance maximum distance and once it reaches maximum distance velocity will become zero and again it will start coming back and it will hit the ground with some velocity u okay and that velocity with which it is hitting the ground will be same as that of velocity with which i thrown it up conclusion and at each and every point the velocity with which the body moving up the same velocity only the ball will be moving down also as you could see that along the horizontal direction so here uh, this ball is moving up with v double dash and this ball is coming down the same ball only when it is coming down and the ball is coming down when it reaches the same position velocity is going to be v double dash only at half mark velocity is going to be v dash u by root 2 similarly at the half mark when it is coming back the velocity will be u by root 2 similarly here also v triple dash here also v triple dash and when it reaches the maximum distance velocity is zero when it is coming back also velocity is zero that is both during ascent and descent velocities will be same at that particular uh, point okay and we found out this h max value u square by 2g and time of ascent and time of descent the time taken for moving from here to here and time taken to moving from here to here both of them are same which is u by g and of course we identified that the final velocity with which it is going to hit will be same as that of initial velocity with which we projected up and uh, time of flight this is something which i didn't say time of flight is simply the summation of ascent time plus descent time which is going to be 2u by g okay and now finally we determined this also v dash is equal to u by root 2 so there are some conclusions which i given you when i am explaining this please keep that conclusions in mind useful for solving problem and also useful when we enter projectile motion now regarding this problem the velocity was given as 50 meter per second so just substitute 50 here okay 50 square by 2g this will be 50 by g g can be taken as 9.81 or 10 it depends on the problem you take it you substitute it you will be getting Okay, so initial velocity is 50. So final velocity with which it is hitting back is also 15 meter per second only. So this is going to be two times of 50 by g, and this is going to be 50 by root two. 
see the important part of this problem is not substitution of the numericals you need to understand the concepts clearly that is very important okay